I'll say good morning to everyone. It's time for us to start our Sunday school lesson this morning. And uh, before I get going, I just want to give special thanks to all of you uh, for your prayers and uh, your concern for my wife, uh, Robin and Joe, and Shoni. And I uh, just want to tell you, Shoni, uh, the stuff that I couldn't do, you did. Thank God for that this morning. I really appreciate that. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Most gracious God and kind Heavenly Father, we come right now in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus. We just say thank you again for just another day of life, another chance where we could worship and praise your name and to give you the worship that truly you deserve. And so we ask just now as we journey into the Sunday school lesson uh, that you might illuminate our hearts, uh, that you might illuminate our minds, that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to us on this morning. We say thank you for what you're about to do. We love you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to thank the pastor and uh, the pastor for education, uh, Reverend Williams. And uh, Reverend Robinson for allowing me to stand uh, this morning to facilitate this lesson because we're going to learn together. This lesson suggests to you and to me uh, that we are in the College of Patience and Wisdom. And whenever you have something, you have to test it to make sure that it uh, will meet the specifications of uh, the design. We are in this lesson, this series of lessons. Uh, we had four weeks of blessings of a savior all the way up to Christmas. We had the blessings of the gospel and we're starting a new unit, blessings of grace in Christ uh, last week, Reverend Williams did a great job of blessing of belonging in Christ. And today we're going to talk about blessings in the midst of trials. Jesus said, in this life, you will have. <laughs> it ain't no might about it. You will have trials and tribulations. Trials are a sure thing as my mama would say if you never had a trial keep on living and just keep on living and trials and tribulations and testing will show up at your door today's aim is facts to understand that the purpose of trials and temptations is to develop patience principle to teach that trials and temptations in the lives of believers help make them strong in their faith. And then finally, the application is to teach the trials and temptations in the lives of believers, no, to help students learn to endure trials and temptations, knowing that the Lord is perfecting their faith. James, the writer of this book, is suggesting to us that when we fall into trial and testing, that we should count it all joy. Not just some of it, <laughs> but count it all joy. Watch this text on this morning as he teaches us in this college of patience and wisdom. It says, James, 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 a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this James, uh, the scholars would tell us, could be uh, as many as four to six James that are mentioned in the word of God. 
James, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, James the less, James the father of Judas, and James, here we are, the half-brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe that the writer of this book is James, the brother of Jesus. But watch James this morning. He said, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> if it had been us, we wouldn't have said we was a servant. Uh, we would use our familial ties to Lord over other people. I never shall forget, it's been, been a few years now, uh, me and I went with Reverend Malone to Alabama. Me and my best friend, and my best friend was Reverend Malone's cousin. Reverend Malone had just become president of the Baptist General State Convention, so I believe it was 2008. And uh, we were in the hotel or whatever, and, uh, and my buddy kept saying, Cuz! Hey, Cuz! Cuz! And our pastor said, Right now, I'm not your cousin, I'm your president. <laughs> James, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch what James calls himself. He calls himself a bond slave. He calls himself one who gives himself to the will of another. James says, I'm a bond man. Voluntarily, I'm a slave to serve my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Now watch this, watch this. Uh, we want the Lord to be resident, but we don't want him to be president. We want the Lord to be in our life but we want the Lord to rubber stamp what we want to do. But James says, I'm a slave. I don't do what I want to do. I do what my Lord tells me to do. And I'm going to use Reverend Malone a, a lot this morning as an example. Uh, but when he was selling insurance, the Lord told him, quit your job. And, uh, Go full-time pastorate in the church. Now, when you cut your in income down from uh, about 75 to 90 percent, and the Lord says, uh, quit your job to make less money. Might not be able to take care of your family, but God says, give it up. And Reverend Malone People said he might have been crazy, out of his mind, but he did what the Lord told him to do. Our Lord and Savior, he is our king. And whatever the king says, it goes, and he don't have to talk to nobody about it. As Reverend Williams said this morning, God is sovereign. He does what he wants to, to whom he wants to, where he wants to how he wants to. You know why? Because he's God and God all by himself. James said, I'm a servant. And I know about y'all this morning. I'm, a, I'm just a servant. Let me work. Get out of my way. Let me work because I'm a servant. I ain't trying to put my name in lights because one of these old days he's going to call my name Servant. Servant, well done. Anybody want to hear him say, well done? So anybody want to hear him say, well done this morning? I'm just a servant. And I want to hear him say, well done. He says, I'm a servant of the Lord 
Jesus Christ. Talking about his divinity and his humanity. He is Christos, the anointed one, the Messiah. James said, I'm his slave. He's my boss. He the one to tell me what to do. Can you imagine though, sometimes I remember when I was at my home church, um, uh, people in the community called me uh, uh, Reverend Keaton's flunky. And I was saying to myself, why are they calling me a flunky? All I'm doing is what the word of God tells me to do. I pay my tithes. I go to Sunday school. I go to Bible class. I go to prayer meeting. But I'm his flunky. Tell somebody, I don't mean, I don't mind being God's flunky. Yes, sir. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And folks say that in the community. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, but guess what? I'm going to keep on being a flunky for God. They think that, that uh, Sister Lee, they think that uh, uh, we pay 10%, more than 10% of our income, give uh, more than 10% of our income. And I've learned that in God's economy, 90% is more than 100%. Y'all ain't feeling me. Because God can handle 90% better than you can handle 100%. Oh, I wish that's a help up there this morning. God, he's my Lord. He is my Savior. Look what he says. He says, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, he says, greetings. The idea that this uh, verse and this text is trying to suggest to us is that Jews were scattered all across the world. These were, uh, these were uh, uh, Christian Jews. Uh, they had accepted Jesus Christ. And so James, writing the general epistle, uh, somebody said the Catholic epistle, the universal epistle, uh, he says, to all of my brethren scattered all over the world. And I want y'all to know this morning that God has uh, people of God all over the world. Never shall forget, I went to Germany. And uh, I met a fellow who went to high school with my brother-in-law. I said, well, what a small world that we live in. And so he says, uh, brethren, watch this. He's talking about brothers. He ain't talking about uh, folk who ain't brothers. He ain't talking about folk who not sisters. He's saying brothers and sisters, saints of God, God's people, those who belong unto God. Watch what he says. He says, count some of it joy. He says, count it all joy. And I said to myself, well, how in the world can I count all this bad stuff that's happening to me? Joy. The reason why I can count it all joy is because of what it says in Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good to them who love God and are the called according to to his purpose. I want to tell somebody this morning, God has purpose in your life. I wish I had some help today. God has purpose in your life and therefore you can count it all joy. Now, what is joy? Joy is not like happiness because happiness depends on what happens. If stuff don't happen that you like it to happen, you don't have no happiness. But if things happen like you want them to happen, then you are happy. But joy transcends all of that. Joy comes down uh, from the inside. It's gladness. It's 
cheerfulness. It is calm delight. Uh, you don't have to run, run around with a long face because you got joy. Anybody got joy this morning? Songwriter said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Let me say this morning, the church ought to be the most joyful place in all of the world. Lord, help me this morning. I said, the church ought to be the most joyful place in all the world. Why is that? Because first of all, uh, 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 anybody know that you're saved? Anybody know that Jesus Christ is your Savior? Anybody know this morning that when they die, they're going to heaven? If you got all of that, you ought to have some joy. Lord, help me this morning. Deacon Red is, is, is uh, going through a struggle in his life, but he still got joy. Lord, help me this morning. Joy comes from knowing something. Joy comes from knowing somebody. Joy comes from knowing that you are going somewhere. What is it that I know? I know I've been born again. My mama said, you got to know that you know that you know that you know that you have been born again. I know this morning that Jesus is my Savior. Like David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Can anybody claim in this morning that he is your shepherd? Yes, I know that he is my Savior. But then watch this. Where, uh, what do I know? Where am I going? I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Listen, if that don't give you some joy, I don't know what else will give you some joy. To know that when you leave this old mean world, you have a place to go. Watch what he says. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptations or trials. Anybody ever been through? I said, anybody ever been through? Dorothy Noah would say going through is better than being stuck. Pastor asked his, uh, white pastor asked his, uh, one of his black members, what is your favorite scripture? He said, it came to pass. And so pastor asked him the question afterwards, what, what do you mean by came to pass? He says, I'm suggesting to you that it's not going to stay. The songwriter put it like this, that I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. It, it, it came to pass. Watch what he says. He said, Count into divers temptations, trials, and testing. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Um, supposed to have joy when my mama die. I'm supposed to have joy when my child has gotten in trouble uh, and has wound up in deal uh, Department of Corrections. I'm supposed to be uh, have joy that my light my lights have been cut off. I'm supposed to have joy when folks put my name on the wings of the morning. Wait, 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 wait. James, you don't know what you're talking about. Joy? What you talking about, joy? The reason why you can count it all joy is because God has a purpose. Yes, he, he's going somewhere with this trial tribulation, trouble, and testing. It's, it's an experiment. It's kind of like I used to be an engineer, and uh, 
we just we just we designed and came with an idea of a, of a weld quality monitor uh, that we could tell you the strength of the weld while the weld was going on. And so the weld quality monitor would measure the voltage, the current, the travel speed, the nugget size. But we had to had to draw out the design of this electronic device. Then I had to um, put together an electronic schematic. And then I would go from the electronic schematic to be building the prototype. And then I would take the prototype and I would test it to make sure that it's going to do what it was designed to do. Lord, help me this morning. What is God is doing with us? He putting us through trials and testing and trouble to see if we're going to react like we were designed to react. God, somebody says, say God has purpose. We learned in this lesson this morning that trials come to make us strong. If you don't go through nothing, you don't grow. You don't become strong. Here's the deal. God wants you to grow up. I better say it again. God wants us to grow up. Sometimes you think in your mind that there are more um, babies in the upstairs class than it is downstairs in the cradle roll. You can't say amen, just say ouch. God wants you and I to grow up spiritually. Isn't it interesting? Some people have been in church for 50 years and they haven't grown any. I had this young man, 73. <laughs> he was a great Sunday school teacher. But I was trying to figure out what's wrong with this dude. He's 73 years old, acting like a kid. Why is that? I said, Lord, what, what, Lord, what's wrong with this dude? And so his sister uh, one day invited pastor and him to breakfast at her house. And uh, so I get there and she says, pastor, the food is in the kitchen. Go in and get what you want. But she said to her brother, babe, what you want, I'm going to go fix it for you. And I said, oh, only thing wrong with him, he just need to grow up. Are y'all in here today? Folks been in the church for 50 years and still need to grow up. How do we grow up? We grow up through the word of God. That's why Sunday school is so important. That's why Bible school is so important. That's why prayer is important. They'll help you to grow up. God has purpose. He wants to make us strong. Secondly of all, God wants to make us sure. I mean, do you know that you know that you know that you have been born again? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Um, there's a process of refining gold. So you go down and you dig out the golden ore. You put it in a crucible. You put heat on it. Put heat on it. And what happens is all of the junk comes to the top. Lord, help me this morning. And you're watching people go through trials and testing, 
and they don't act like they're Christian because stuff is coming up to the top. I had, had a friend of mine, a good friend, preacher, and uh, he was going through, and uh, his wife had tried to kill him. He was going through, and so he was at work, and uh, somebody came to me and told me, the preacher was cussing at work. I said, if I was going through what he's going through, I'd be doing more than cussing. When you go through testing, the heat of testing, the junk bubbles to the top. God is trying to make us sure. The mining of gold and the purifying of gold is just like the purifying of silver. And so somebody asked, they said, Mr. Silversmith, how do you know when the silver is perfected? He says, I know the silver is perfected when I see my reflection in the silver. Lord, help me this morning. And all God is trying to do is to see his reflection. See his reflection in you. Somebody said, I want to be like Mike. But somebody help me this morning. I want to be like Jesus. Say it with me this morning. I want to be like Jesus. He says, count it all joy. Let me, let me digress here this morning. In this word, fall. People say, I just fell into sin. Let me suggest this morning. You don't fall into sin. You walk into sin. Now y'all in here. Because you got to plan it. got to come into your mind. Think about it. It just, ha it didn't just happen. You planned it. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just talking about me. He says, but when you fall into diverse temptations, testing and trouble. God wants to make sure that you are the real deal. Y'all do know that there are many qualities of gold. There's 24 karat gold. 24 karat gold has no other metals mixed with it. It is a pure unadulterated gold. But then there's 18 karat gold. 18 karat gold got a little more junk in it. 18 karat gold. But then there's 14 karat gold. It's got more junk in it. <laughs> but, then, but then there's another kind of gold there is I'm getting there. Gold plated. There's gold flake. And then there is fool's gold. How many of y'all know that we have all those kinds of qualities of people in the church? Everybody's not in the same place. And one of the things that frustrates me about Christian people is we want folk to join our church who've already been cleaned up. We want to go fishing. And we want to get catch clean fish. We want folk to be as holy as we think we are. Had this woman who run the house of ill repute. Hope y'all know what ill repute means. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. She ran a house of 304. Somebody write, write down, somebody, somebody write down 304, then turn it upside down. And you tell me what you see. You got it? She ran a house of ill repute. But she was always in the church trying to tell folk how holy she was. Oh, 
with these young folks right I said to her one day, I said, do you remember? I said, do you remember? Anybody up in here remember? You remember where you came from? As good as I is. He's still working on me. <laughs> I still got some junk in me, James. Somebody might say a lot of junk. But tell somebody, he's testing and trying me. That when he gets through with me, I shall come forth. As pure gold. Watch this, watch this. He says, he says count all joy. He says, when you fall into trials and tribulations and testing. He says, look, look, look at this. Look at this. God's going somewhere. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Pastor, people say, I want I want some patience. I ain't asking for no patience. No. Because to get patience, you got to go through. I ain't asking for no patience because I, I don't, anybody want to go through. He said, but the trying of your faith, that's what it's all about. It's about that little word called faith. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Yes, God is working on you and on me. Uh, he's, he wants to make us strong. He wants to make us sure. But then he wants to make us shine. Come here, Job. Come here, Job. Job was a bad dude. God says to Satan, what you doing, man? I'm walking up to and fro, seeing who I can devour. God says, watch this. Have you considered my servant, Sharon? <laughs> Have you considered my servant, Job? And God says, do whatever you want to do, but don't touch his soul. Send him through. You think you had a bad day? He lost all of his family in one day. He lost all of his finances in one day. He lost his friendships in one day. You think you had a bad day. But notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, but Job never cursed God. Some of us are not alone because God would curse everybody around us. So Job's going through all that stuff. All the stuff is gone. The devil says skin for skin. He only serving you because you got a hedge around him. Have you considered my servant Job? Listen, listen. God, question is, can God brag on you? Can God say, have you considered my servant Deacon Matthews? Because he's going to go through the trial and the testing. Job said, uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Going through his trial and his testing, he took the time out to give God some praise. My question with you this morning, can you handle it? Can you still praise God when things are not going so well? I mean, can you Give God the praise in the midst of the trial. I'm learning that I can sometimes. <laughs> Going through. Anybody know God is good this morning? He's worthy to be praised. Knowing this. In God's purpose, 
that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yes, sir. Well, we'll hang on, watch them in favor and, and, and come grab this mic so people can hear you. in Mississippi one time and uh, a lady said something and it stuck with me. She said sometimes you have to preach to yourself <laughs> and, and, and what you just said it flicked that back to me you know going through trials that's sometimes you have to sit down and preach to yourself yes, sir. to let you know that you uh, uh, know you know this is how God feeds you this is how God bring you through when you can go to Bible study Sunday school whatever session you can get in and learn about him and he can give you that feed you that word, and that's what pulled you through. Yes, so you had to sit down and preach to yourself. To yourself. Amen. Right after my wife had uh, fallen sick and was on the ventilator, and I was invited to preach in Freeport. And I said to the people, I said, y'all don't mind if I just preach to myself today. <laughs> Encourage yourself. in the Lord. Watch this. He says, God has purpose. Somebody ought to shout this morning. God got purpose for your life. Lord, help me this morning. Listen, listen, listen. You're just not stammering to the, through the dark, but God has purpose. He says, the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. So my favorite hymn used to be, somebody say used to be, used to be where he leads me, I will follow. I don't sing that much anymore. Because Deacon Heard, he's taking me places I didn't want to go. He's put me through stuff that I didn't want to be bothered with. But God, I'm his servant. I'm a bondsman. I do what my master says to God. All God is trying to do is to make you shine. Make you strong, make you sure. And make you shine, he says, but Watch this. He says, but let patience have her perfect or complete work that you may be mature and whole, wanting nothing. Never shall forget many years ago now, and a new pastor at the church, church was going through a certain issue and there was this old mother she was just cool calm and collect everybody else was in the uproar but the old mother remember long she was not worrying about anything she was cool and so after the meeting was over I said uh, why are you so calm and everybody else is all upset she died last year 99 and a half and she said to me, she says, God brought me through that. And he's going to bring us through this. Are y'all with me this morning? After you've been through stuff. What songwriter said, I've been through too much. I think about Sister Hughes back there. And I remember she was in church. And stuff happened to her brain. But guess what? She's still here. This morning. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning. Watch this. Watch this. He says, let 
patience have its perfect work in you, and that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, this word wisdom is connected through what you're going through. Wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is having knowledge and being able to properly use that knowledge. I'm going to say it again. It is having the knowledge, the information, be smart. But then wisdom says you're able to handle or use that information in a proper kind of a way. What he says, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, so I'm going through this thing. Uh, God is sending me through this test. He's sending me through this trouble. He's sending me through this trial. Lord, give me wisdom how to deal with this trouble. Are y'all in here this morning? You got to ask God to show you how to handle the trouble. I mean, has anybody ever had trouble on their job? And you had to go talk to the big folk. And when you're talking to the big folk before you get there, you already mad. You ready to whip that ring in? But you gotta ask God, <laughs> give me wisdom, give me some help. Had this evaluation. Had talked to the uh, HR director the other day. And she says, when you go into the evaluation, ask him to do this, this, and this. Because I was mad. And I was, somebody says, he was ready. <laughs> I was ready to tie him up. And the first thing he did was, he did this. He did that. I prayed before I went in. And he did everything that she said that he should do. Somebody said, ask God for wisdom. And he will work it out. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth it to all men. Liberally. And upbraid is not, and it shall be given. And watch this, watch this. God is the giver of wisdom. And all you got to do is ask, and He will give you the wisdom that you need for that situation. And y'all forgive me this morning. You can be stupid if you want to. But you don't got to be stupid. Try to make y'all laugh. Um, ask God. I'm a living witness. He will help you through your trial and your tribulation. What God will do He'll put people in your way to help you in your testing. I was trying to figure out, and, and, and I'm, not, uh, I'm not afraid just to admit this, but, but in 41 years of marriage, I didn't go in my wife's closet messing with her stuff. And so I needed to buy her some stuff. Here I go. But Sister Malone, I didn't know what to buy. <laughs> and so she told me to bring her her tennis shoes. I didn't know what the tennis shoes was at. But watch God. Shoney bought us some tennis shoes. I wish I was helping here this morning. 
I hadn't talked to Shoni. Shoni bought her the right clothes so she can go into rehab. Y'all ain't feeling me this morning. Won't he will? I hadn't talked to her, but she everything that I didn't know what to do. Sister Washington did it for me. Verse, but he giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. Look at verse number six. It says, But let him ask in faith. There's that word again. God is trying to strengthen our faith. Nothing wavering, don't be wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Driven by the wind, tossed and driven, it's here right now, right now, and the wave goes away. For for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Let me say this this morning. The only thing that moves God is your faith. You can cry. You can jump up and down and scream, but if you don't have no faith, nothing's going to happen. Now, wait, wait. What's faith? What's faith? Faith is believing in the word of God. Taking God at his word. We believe everybody but God. Watch this. I shouldn't ask this question, but I'm asking. Who brushed their teeth this morning? Don't raise your hand. But we put that toothpaste on that toothbrush, stuck it in the water, brushed our teeth, and never called the manufacturer to say, is this really toothpaste? You took him at his word. Okay. Most of us took showers this morning. I said most of us. We didn't go down to the water reclamation plant and say, Mr. Reclamation Man, prove to me that water is coming out of my faucet. I just got in the shower, turned it on, and took my shower. I didn't question the man because he told me it was water. I saw somebody this morning in a new Lexus. And I guarantee you, I'm going to pick on Pastor Malone in his Lexus 460, the best driving car ever made. I guarantee you he's never gone to the gas station attendant before he put the gas in. Prove to me this is gasoline and not water. We simply take the man at his word. But within, we always want to question God. He said, pay your tithes. Oh, Lord, I, 
He says, if you do it, I'd open up the windows. Oh, I, I, I can't do it. We question God. We take the word of everybody else. You gotta hurry, he says. Uh, tossed and driven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You gotta have faith. You got to take God at his word. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. He says, I love this. He says, a double minded man is unstable in some of his ways. Kind of like, can you imagine me standing up here with two heads? My head big enough, I know that, but yeah. <laughs> So just imagine that two small heads up here, not one big one, okay? One on this side and one on that side. The right mind says, let's do this. The left mind says, let us do this. Do this, and do this, do this, do this. And you never know what you're going to do because you are a double-minded person. He says, a double-minded man is unstable. He said, all. Does anybody in here know what all in the Greek means? It means all. All. His way. And he said, do you trust me? No. Because you're unstable. Not in some of your ways. Everything. Watch this, watch this. So he jumps from verse 8 to verse 12. And so what we miss in those three verses is this thing of receiving the crown of life. How many of y'all know this morning that you're going through all of this stuff but God is going to give you a crown of life. It's called the martyr's crown. It is bestowed upon those who persevere under trial. It's kind of like, uh, anybody here used to run track? Okay, so, Brother Tennant, Deacon Tennant. So if you won the race, what would you get? Huh? Medals, ribbons, first place. But he's telling us if we endure the tribulation and the trial, he says we will get a crown of life. I, I need to hurry this morning. Everybody look, everybody look at the graphic on the screen.
He says, the glory does not come without the, without the trial. Christ's glorious resurrection, which came only after the cross, as this illustration depicts. He has the cross. He went to the tomb. And somebody tell me this morning, the tomb is empty. He got up with all power in his hand. Practical points it is our Christian duty to find joy in difficult and trying circumstances. The key to accepting afflictions in a positive manner is knowing that they can produce something good in us. Another key to coping with times of testing is seeking God's wisdom on how to handle the situation. It is love for God that enables us to endure whatever he allows in our lives. We must be careful not to confuse our lusts with God's will. A godly life begins with a proper understanding of the nature of God. Do me a favor this morning, put your hands together and give God some praise. for being encouraged in his word today. Everybody's going through something. Amen. But it's good to know by way of the word of God that your trials will strengthen you. Amen. So hang on in there. Hang on in there. God got us. He promised us in the Old and the New Testament he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. I'm standing here on behalf of Reverend Robinson. And Minister Douglas, um, before we end out Sunday school, I want to give a quick announcement pertaining to Sunday school, because um, I know we have a busy day with it being Black History Month and Youth Month. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause because we want to encourage them. As always, and uh, as we take a look at Black History this month, just think about how God has used men and women in mighty ways to contribute to this great country's history. Amen. And let's always remind ourselves that history is still in the making. This, the question is, am I going to be a part of it? Amen? Amen. So I wanted to come up here this morning. Um, last month, um, during Sunday school hour and even um, during Wednesday Bible study, uh, a reoccurring um, theme kept on coming up as people came up and asked questions. Um, and this is nothing new. This is something trending in society. How many have heard something recently, uh, since we, especially since we've been in COVID, about uh, mental health? We, we've heard words like anxiety, depression, and fatigue, and um, suicides uh, have went up as people are going through uh, dealing with different things. So um, God has given us many resources here in the kingdom. So what we will do in March here at St. Luke, you have five opportunities to learn and get help concerning mental health. Amen? Now, I know this can be taboo sometimes in some circles, but the blessing of it is that God has provided a platform away, and there's resources. So during the Sunday school hour um, next month, 8.30 to 9.30, if you choose to, you can go down in the basement, and we will... Um, during Sunday school from 8.30 to 9.30, we'll have four different speakers. Our first Sunday in March will be our own lady, Sharon Malone. Amen? So Sister uh, Malone has, in case you didn't know, a Bachelor of Science in um, Anthropology and also uh, specifically in when it comes to social work. And as you see up here, we, we, we it's not about titles, but we want you to know that the people that are coming in that are available to help have credentials. They've been educated to help us. Amen. 
And so second Sunday, we'll have uh, a brother, union brother of mine, Mr. Kale Steins. He's the EAP rep out of Chrysler and has been so for over 20 years. He has a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. And so um, <clears throat> a lot of what Sister Malone did over 20 years at Jana Waddles, he does for us at the Chrysler plant. When there's issues, he will assess you and then refer you out to a facility that can further help you get the treatment that you need. He will be speaking to us on second Sunday. Third Sunday, we will have Reverend Kevin Thomas, um, and he's been doing a lot of work in the community. He also has his bachelor's in psychology and is also practicing right now, currently, um, by way of Crystal Lake um, at a facility down there. He will be coming ministering to us. Degrees, amen. Amen. And then we have uh, last uh, Dr. Teresa Barnes, who her and her family have been visiting here quite frequently. She will be um, doing the last session. And then on Saturday, March 18th, the Spiritual Guidance will be hosting um, a session here. We have a, a psychiatrist coming in from Columbus, Ohio. So from 8 to 12, sh psychology psychologist. Thank you. She will be coming in and doing a two-hour session. So she'll, she'll be doing one in the morning, and then we'll break, and she'll do another one, and then we'll be letting out. Food will be provided for you and everything. So there will be more information. That flyer will be available next week. Yes. So, but actually, um, the time is just um, is going to go from eight to twelve, and um, we should be she should be um, through presenting at um, eleven thirty. We'll have lunch, and everyone's dismissed. We will have flyers next week. So we want you all to know what is being uh, available for you here during the Sunday school hour. And um, all you have to do is come out. Don't suffer in silence. Don't suffer in silence. I've heard many heartbreaking stories after heartbreaking stories um, that sometimes ended in suicide. Some got the help they needed before they carried out the suicide attempt. But um, don't neglect your mental health. Just like you, when your stomach hurts, you nourish it. When there's ache and pain, you call your physician. If you're suffering mentally, get help. Get help. There is absolutely no excuse for suffering. It's not a matter of if but when you deal with anxiety and depression. Will you reach out and get the help that's there waiting for you? Amen? And then also, just to encourage you, every last one of the, the speakers or presenters who will be facilitating these sessions are all saved. They're all saved. And you should be shouting. Why? Because they're in it with you. They can understand, and because it's from a spiritual perspective. Not a worldly perspective, but a spiritual one. And I don't know about you, but that counts. My regular physician is a Christian. My dentist is a Christian. If you want to help me out, my accountant is a physician. If you want to help me out in my life, seek spiritual help in all areas. Amen? Amen. Amen. We had 79 uh, people attend Sunday school class this morning. Amen. And we took up a total offering of $52.80. Amen? Amen. All right, now we will have devotion from the youth. Let's applaud and encourage them this month. Amen.
Matthew 27, 32 through 36. And as they came out, they found a man, Simon, Cyrene, Simon by the name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they came unto the place called Golgotha, they meant that is to say a place of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture they meant that they cast lots, and sitting down they watched him there. I read Matthew verse 27, 32 through 36. this day. I thank you, Lord, for all bringing us here together and letting us just be able to come to your house one more time. I just ask that we have a great service today and that you just give pastor good things to teach us about and just keep us in our right minds, keep us healthy, just protect us. Let your angels watch over us, Lord. And I just ask that you allow us to have an amazing day and let everything go according to your plan. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good morning, St. Luke. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Paul says, again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Anybody got anything to rejoice? Clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. How many know God is good? All the time. All the time God is good. We are to always give thanks. Uh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Uh, his mercy endures forever. Is that all right? It's a good place to give thanks, right? We in the right house? <laughs> yeah.
Hallelujah. Amen. I can't stress it enough. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, in everything. In everything. In everything. Anybody agree with the word of God? In everything, give thanks. Sometimes it don't look good, but it is for your good. This is the will of God concerning you. You in Christ Jesus. Amen. Aren't we glad that he died for us? He died for me. And we're glad the blood still works. He died for me. Amen. Make it personal. That's why I'm living today. That's why I'm breathing today. That's why I have the activities of my limbs on today.
The blood still works. Amen. It's still cleansing and making whole. The blood still works. some family member that don't know Jesus. Let them know the blood still works. People are wandering around in darkness out there. They need to know that the blood still works. Amen. It's got the power to cleanse you. And I like that song saying it will never, never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It goes to the lowest valley. That blood that Jesus said will never. something happens when you've been washed in that blood. Amen. It'll never never lose this power. Yes, Lord. It's still working. It's still saving. 
you see a deliverance people from their sin. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Matter of fact, uh, that's, that's about where I'm coming from today. Matthews 27. Matthews 27. I want to talk about the helper of Christ. I'm going to focus on verse 35, actually. I think it is. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to focus. I want to start at 26. And read down. Verse 26 in the 27th chapter of Matthew. So then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to the crucifier, to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocking, mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head and after that they had mocked him they took the robe off from him and put it, his own garments on him and led him away to be crucified and as they came out they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Let's stop the reading there. And, and we thank God for his word. I want to talk about the helper of Christ. The helper of Christ. The rulers passed judgment on Christ. He was a threat to them. And he must, they said, be destroyed. The Sanhedrin, both the religious and the civic leaders, and Pilate passed judgment upon Christ. In their minds, Christ was a threat. Even Pilate gave in, despite his doubts, to, these, to execution of Christ in order to preserve the peace of his rule and the security of his position. They said Pilate was already in trouble of being replaced, so he had to do something to please the Jews. You know, position and power and wealth, security, envy, and much more all cause the, uh, the powerful uh, destroying of the Son of God. They did not want him around. The soldiers marked and tortured Christ. Their treatment included at least 17 abuses. At least 17 abuses. First of all, they scrudged him. In other words, they beat him. He was stripped and beaten with a whip. This was a savage, excruciating punishment. 
The whip was made of leather straps with two small balls attached to the end of each strap. The balls was made of rough lead or sharp bones or spikes so that they would cut deeply into the flesh. His hands were tied to a post above his head and he was beaten. It was a custom for the prisoner to be lashed until he was judged near death by the presiding centurion. Now I know you all understand that the Jews could only give 40 lashes. You remember Paul said, every time they gave me 40 lashes, every time, save one time, the Jews could only give 40, but the Romans could beat them until they were almost dead. The criminal's back was more, no more than an unrecognizable mass of flesh. Two facts you need to remember though. Christ was being punished and chastised for our sake. He was being punished and chastised for our sin. You remember the scripture in Isaiah 55 and 53 and 5 says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Also, Christ suffered the chastisement for our sin willingly. He didn't do like a lot of us in the church today. He's got to force us to come to church. Force us to do what we are commissioned to do by Christ. But he suffered for us willingly. That's why he said in Isaiah 50 and 6, he said, I gave my back to the smiters. I gave my back to the smiters. That's willingly suffering. Second thing was well, they humiliated him before a hundred or more soldiers. Now you notice the word that says the whole band. A band of soldiers usually meant a cohort, which was made up of 600 soldiers. However, sometimes a band meant a mantle, a, a maniple. Each cohort consisted of three maniples about 200 soldiers and they believed that at least 200 soldiers were watching him his humiliation uh, he was made a spectacle in order to save us the Sunday school lesson was talking about going through trials and and, and Dr. Williams said that uh, these trials, he said, that we have to go through, they help us to be better. But his was helping us and not him. He was humiliated for our sin. Not only that, but they stripped Christ and put a scarlet robe on him. He was stripped naked and shamed and made to appear ridiculous by being clad with a royal robe. See, sin makes man do some shameful things. Sin made man naked and shamed in the garden. We are naked before him who is to judge the world. Don't think you hide anything from the Lord. There's nothing you do or say that the Lord has not already seen. We are naked before the judge who's going to judge us. 
Christ was stripped naked and shamed that, that he might secure clothing that is white and pure for us, for the righteous folks. He had to secure us a pure white. One day I'm going to wear my white robe. I got my black one on today, but one day I'll have on my pure white robe because Christ has already secured it for me through his humiliation. Christ wore the scarlet robe for us. The scarlet robe symbolizes that we are to bear our sins now. He bared our sins then. Now we are to help him because he wore that robe our sins, our sins can be now white as snow. He don't see my dirtiness anymore. He see me white as snow. Because he wore that scarlet robe, our sins, for our sins, we can wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. Blood still works. It still works. Fourthly, they put a crown of thorns on the head of Christ and a reed in his hand. A mock crown was made out of these uh, limber, the limbs from a thorn bush and then jammed up on his head. I used to have one. I don't know who got it. I wish I did. I get my whip out of there and let them bleed a little because they got my thorn that was there. <laughs> yeah, I had to get him a little blood. That, that, that thorn represented the blood that was put on his head for us. The thorns pierced through the skin of his brow and under his hair. Blood streaming down his head and his face. This mock scepter was made out of a weak, limber reed and thrust into his hand. The thorns are a symbol of God's curse upon the earth. The results of sin in the garden. You remember, don't you? After sin in the garden, thorns grew. It was a sign of God's curse. Christ was bearing the sins that brought about this curse. He was made a curse for us. Christ held a limbo, weak reed, the reed that is so easily shaken with the wind that wavers and withers and wastes away. It held a reed that symbolizes the weak kingdoms of this world. Kings on that are so easily shaken and withered and wasted away. Look at what's going on in Ukraine. They're tearing up a kingdom over there right now. In the Middle East, they're fighting, tearing up kingdoms. Kingdoms of this world are weak. I don't know why you want to hang in these kingdoms when you can get prepared to go to a greater kingdom. A kingdom that will never fade away. He went to secure that for us. He held it as part of his suffering so that he might secure an eternal sceptical and an eternal kingdom and throne where we will be. You know, we didn't got so attached to the world uh, that we forget about we got a better place. Now, I've been in, this, in here many times for a lot of young folks because uh, this church here has got the room for the young folks when they die. There ain't no other church can hold the young folks to come and be packed from top to bottom. And then somebody get over there and he ain't live nothing. And they get over at that podium and they'll say, he's in a better place. I say, I don't know. I said that to myself, but, but I do say, I don't know. 
If you ain't live right, you ain't going to this kingdom I'm talking about. This kingdom is only for those who live for the Lord while you are here. Fifth thing they did, they bowed and ridiculed the claim of Christ to be king. They jokingly bowed their knee before him and mocking and shouting, Hail, king of the Jews! They scorned him as a, as a sham king. But the day is coming when bowing the knee and confessing Christ to be Lord will be no joke. There will be no marking and no more one day. That's why Paul told him in Philippians 2, 9 and through 11, he said, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Won't be no joke one day. Those who have joked, they're going to be crying. Save me, but it's going to be too late. You got to get it now. You can't wait. The devil the one tell you to wait. You got time. How do you know you got time? You don't know when the Lord is going to call your number. These people riding up I-39. All those cars pile up on each other. You don't know when somebody going to walk in where you are and start shooting. And you might be the one they hit. So don't say I got time. Only God knows the time. The sixth thing they spat, oh Lord, upon Christ. It was the custom for subjects to kiss their ruler as a sign of homage and allegiance. But the soldiers gave the Lord the mocking allegiance by spitefully spitting in his face. I don't know about you, but I got good religion. But please don't spit in my face. I got good religion. But they spit in his face. But he bore that spite, the spitting and the mocking in order to deliver men from their perishing. But the day has now come when the Lord is not to be spit upon but kissed. He is to be given a, a, a genuine, not a mocking allegiance. He's calling on us. Those of us who've been saved, those of us who accepted him as our, as our personal savior. He wants us to give him his, our allegiance. Not this mock stuff that we got going today. People pretending to be happy. Pretending to shout. Pretending to do things. That's mock allegiance. He don't want mock allegiance. He want our allegiance. Seventh thing. They beat him on the head with the reed. Now the Greek word for smoke him means they kept on beating him. When it says smoke, not just one time, but they kept on 
beating him. They took the reed, the mock sceptre, and used it as a weapon, beating him on the head continuously. And perhaps even passing it from one to the other. Giving everybody an opportunity to be spiting him. He was bruised and bleeding. A horrible sight. I don't know if any of you watched that Passion of Christ that Mel Gibson did. And I'm going to show you how the world don't like it. They didn't even help him. They wouldn't help him. He couldn't get nobody, none of his acting buddies or, or none of his acting friends to help him make that movie. But he made it all by himself. You saw what a bloody mess he was. Horrible sight. But there are two things you need to remember. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And then he came back in verse number 10 and he said, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased God to bruise him for us. All he took for you And you won't serve? You won't worship? You won't surrender? Number eight. They stripped Christ of the kingly robe and put his own robe back on him. Aggravating the wound on his back. They were now ready to get to the matter at hand. His crucifixion. But as they stripped the kingly robe off, something happened. The, blood, the dried blood clinged to the robe, ripping from the wound. In excruciating pain, his blood began to flow from the wounds again. Also in removing the kingly robe, the soldiers were stripping him of the authority that they had given him. It was just a mock authority, a homage, but, but, but it had the symbol of attitude of the world that go towards him right now. The world don't want him around. Cut Franklin says in that song about Jesus, he says that they'll, they'll say God, but don't nobody want to say Jesus. He was bruised for us. No man can determine the authority of God's son. He possesses authority because he is God's son. Not because man gives him no authority. You can't take what belongs to Christ. God has given him all authority and rule because he has borne the suffering and the death on the cross for man. You remember in the garden? He said, let this bitter cup pass. He said, that's why you came. You came to save man. They stripped him. But nine says they, they forced Christ to carry the cross until he was exhausted. The condemned criminal carried his own cross 
uh, was a common practice of that day. A centurion riding in the front with his stallion, leading the way. Then there was a herald following the, 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 the soldier on the horse, shouting out the crime that the criminal had done. And right behind the herald was the condemned man and a batch of soldiers. The criminal had to carry his cross up and down through the streets of the city, taking twists and turns and twisted routes. The soldiers did, the Roman soldiers did this to let the people around now know that if you do something wrong, this is what you're going to get. You know what I love about God? God shows us through other people. If you live right, this is what you're going to get. <laughs> if you live right, this is what you're going to get. The devil show you what you're going to get if you hang out there in the streets, but that's only temporary. How do you know, Malone? Because I was out there. Couldn't keep a dime. Get paid on Friday from Christ and went broke on Tuesday. And I ain't the only one. Some of y'all looking at me was like that. Some of y'all were broke on Friday. Got paid on Friday. You were broke on Friday. I knew some of them like that when I was out there. They made him carry this cross, but notice now, notice two facts. Man forced Christ to carry the cross to Golgotha. Spiritually, it is man's sins that forced Christ to bear that cross. It's our sin. He wasn't bearing that cross just because the soldier said so. He was bearing that cross because of our sins. Then God forced Christ to bear the cross for us. God forced him. You remember, let this bitter cup pass. He said, no. That's why you went. That's why all of us are here now. Because he bared that cross. Then, number 10. He's got his helper here now. They enlisted a Gentile to help with the cross. Christ broke under the weight of the cross. But he had just suffered so much. He had suffered the agony of the garden. You remember in the garden it said that big drops of sweat fell off like blood. And he was crying out three times, let this bitter cup pass. But he couldn't get past the agony of the garden. Not only that, he suffered the tension and the excitement of these trials. Don't you know they had him go through six different trials that night? Three with the civic leaders. Three with the spiritual leaders. He suffered the ridicule and the torture of the soldiers. He had lost too much blood from the savage torture. And he had gone without food and sleep for hours. The soldiers had the legal authority to tap a bystander up on the shoulder and enlist the citizen to help with whatever he needed to carry. In this case, they needed someone to carry the cross of Christ. They tapped Simon of Cyrene. <laughs> yeah, Simon of Cyrene. He bore the cross of Christ. Simon of Cyrene, the man who bore this cross, he, he, he was from Libya. 
That means he was a man of color. That the Lord brought into the picture. Now think about this now. God always got a providential plan. Nothing happens by chance. Not to the Christian believer I'm talking about. Nothing happened by chance to the Christian believer. God oversees the life of every person that belongs to him. I was listening to Dr. Williams as he was talking about this morning and you're going through your trials. It's providential. In other words, God designed them just for you. I don't know why these things happen to me. Don't look like it happened to nobody else. It don't happen to nobody else because it's designed just for you. I got my, my cousin and, and, and Pastor William's best friend uh, pastored uh, uh, two churches that, 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 that was rough. One of them had him living in a house where the, the ceiling was hanging down in the house. And one day one of his girls was walking through the room and the ceiling almost fell and hit her in the head. They fought him and wouldn't do nothing for it. Then he went to another church. And, 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 and this is what happened to him at that church. What they did to Jesus when they spit in his face. They spit in his face at that church. He called me and said, Cuz, this lady just spit in my face. And I asked him, is she dead? That's the first thing I asked him, is she dead? He said, no, I didn't even hear her. I said, you didn't? You better man than I am. But he had rough pastorages. And I said to my wife, I have not had a rough pastorage. But that's because of the providence of God. God designs our paths. He had Simon standing there. Just standing along the roadside. Watching what's going on. And God says to the soldier, that's the one I want you to get to help Jesus with his cross. I want his name in the record. I want you to know that they got a chance to be saved as well. And when you read, you find that Simon had two boys, Alexander and Rufus. And both of them were in the record of being saved. He's the man that helped. Helped Jesus bear his cross. Eleven thing that happened to him was they escorted Christ to a terrible place for execution. The place was called Golgotha. The place of a skull. And why it was given that name, really nobody knows. But it was known as a place of death. It was a rugged place which stirred thoughts of death. Of the corruptible and the decay and flesh that they saw there. It was a terrible place to die. But here up on Golgotha was the picture of the thought of death. And here, he was to die to deliver all men from the bondage of death. You don't have to die. Now, I know we die out this flesh. 
But when we leave this flesh, where will your soul spend eternity? Now, I know we always saying you need to live for the Lord so you can live forever. You're going to live forever somewhere. Yeah, you're going to live forever somewhere. It's going to either be in heaven with the Lord or it's going to be in hell with the devil. If you live with him here and don't change, you're going to live with him there forever. That's why I made up my mind. If y'all go to hell, when you get down there, you tell hell I ain't coming. Make sure you tell hell I ain't coming. He bore the reproach of sin for us. And now we should bear the reproach of righteousness for him. If somebody call you a holy roller, so thank you. You a holy roller, thank you. I appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Bear it for him. Then, twelfth thing was they they gave Christ vinegar mixed with gall. It was a custom to give the criminal spiked wine right before he was raised on the cross. The spiked wine was a strong liquid used as a narcotic drink. Scripture already has said that in, in Psalm 69 and 21 what they were going to do. Christ came to do the will of God, to die as a sacrifice for man. He refused to do God's will unthoughtfully with deadened senses and a semi-conscious mind. He was to taste death for, his, for all men. And he, he would taste it in the full consciousness and to, be in, and to be mentally alert when he died. He refused their narcotics. Isn't it somehow today, every time something starts happening in somebody's life, they want to get something to dead in the pain? I just told you that whatever you're going through, God designed it just for you. But it's designed to make you stronger. But if you got to have something to deaden it every time it comes, how are you going to get stronger? All you're going to do is get hooked. Thirteen, he said that they crucified Christ. The crucifixion itself was the most horrible of deaths. The ancient writer, uh, Ticurus, he wrote it, he said, he called it a despicable death. Cicero called it the most cruel and horrible death. He simply said it at that it was incapable of description. You can't even describe this death. That was the pain of the driven spikes forced through his hands and feet. The weight of his body jolting and pulling against the spikes as the cross was lifted and then rocked into his place. You know they nailed him and then they picked the cross up and rocked the cross and put it in his place. Then there was the scorching sun and the unquissable thirst that gnawed away at his dry mouth and throat. That was the blood oozing from his scorched and scrudged back. His throne crowned brow his feet and his hands. And then just imagine these 
aggravating flies and gants and other little insects. There also was the piercing of the spear in the side. There has never been a more cruel form of execution than crucifixion on the cross. In the simplest terms, Christ was crucified for our sins in order to bring us to God. Then they gambled for his clothes. It was custom for the executing, the executing soldiers to claim whatever they want of the crucified person. The soldiers stripped Christ and divided his clothes among themselves. His coat was valuable. It was seamless. One piece of cloth woven from top to bottom. And the soldiers therefore decided to gamble by casting lots for his coat. See, the coat was valuable in that day. That was what they used that night to cover with. And it even the, the rules said, the rules said that if you, uh, a man owed you money and you took his coat for the day, that when night come, you got to give him his coat back. So he can have it for covering. It was valuable. So they gamble for his coat. Then they sat down and stared at Christ. Death by crucifixion was slow. Sometimes took days for the sufferer to die depending upon how strong he was. Because what he did was, when his feet got too painful, he dropped with his hands. And when the hands got so painful, he'd push up with the feet. And he'd go back and forth, keeping the pain out the hands, keeping the pain out the feet. He could go forth like that for days. But they had to watch him to make sure that none of his friends would come by and relieve him from his suffering because he was to die. Matthew said it like this. They sat down and watched him there. They sat down and watched him there. Then, then they shamed Christ and reproached his claims again. It was the custom for the charge against this criminal to be written and put on a board and nail over his head. This served both to inform the people and to warn the people. Adding shame again to the person who was crucified. In Christ's case, the charges was written in three different languages. The words read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now, this inscription disturbed the religious leaders. They went to Pilate and said, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate simply said to them, what I have written, I have written. <laughs> Ha, ha. 
Listen, God overruled the shame and reproach of our Lord. God saw to that that, that that the very charges against him proclaimed his deity and his honor. He was proclaimed king in three different languages. Language which simple, simple, simplify uh, the world of that day. The Aramaic language was for the Jews. The Latin was for the Gentiles. And the Greek was for those intelligent Jews and Gentiles. Three languages declaring him as king. Finally, finally, I know y'all said. But finally, finally, they added shame and reproach by crucifying Christ between two thieves. I don't know if this was a day set aside for crucifixion or execution or was it the Jews who uh, asked Pilate to crucify him with some criminals so that their claim could be uh, verified that he was just an imposter imposter to be the king and that he was somebody that that was calling himself the son of God, but that he was not. I don't know why they put him up there between those thieves. But it already had been prophesied. Isaiah 12, it already, 53 and 12, it already said it was going to happen. And nothing happens without God knowing. Everything that goes on in your life, let me tell you something, it was already designed before you were born. But God want to know, can you glorify me in it? See, whatever we've been going through, whatever you had in your life, God want to use it for his glory. That's why I stopped complaining. I just start saying, Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this? Christ was counted as a sinner that he might bear the sins of many. Isaiah 53 and 12, I told you, said he was, he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Father, forgive them know what they're doing. They don't even know that they're fulfilling your will. But the man they enlisted <laughs> to help Jesus was a man named Simon from Cyrene. That the city that today is called Shamba, Libya. <laughs> it's in Libya. This man of color helped our Lord bear his cross. And guess what? Since you've been saved, you need to help him bear the cross. You need to start telling folks about Jesus. Tell them boys and the girls, men and women, that Jesus saves. The songs that go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. But don't just do it at Christmas time. Do it all year long. Tell somebody every day when you meet them, Christ died for you. But one thing about it, they couldn't keep him dead. They couldn't keep him dead. They set people around the tomb to guard him. They didn't want to make sure nobody come and roll a stone away and took him out of there. But they didn't realize that God could get inside the tomb and roll it away. 
let his son step out on resurrection ground with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. I don't know about you, but I made up my mind. All he went through for me, I'm not going to hell. He did too much for me. And not just me, he did it for the whole world. Everybody that's not saved need to get saved. And then start living for him. And telling other people about him. So there's nobody like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I made up my mind. I'm going to hang in here. I don't care what happens. I don't care what they do. I'm hanging in here. That's right. I'm going to ride it out. Sometimes the waves get rough. But I'm going to ride it out. It's going to get tough. But I'm going to ride it out. People may turn away, but I'm going to ride it out. You've done too much for me. Somebody here, somebody here, listen. This is the time when you need to say yes. Lord, I've been slacking on you. Lord, I've been staying away from you, Lord. But it's time to say yes. Out of all that he's done to get you saved so that you don't have to end up in a miserable hell. This is the time you need to come to him and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If you're here, if you're here, if you're here, you want Jesus in your life, come on. Come, surrender to him today. Surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God did all of that for you so you could be saved. And all you have to do is receive it. If you're here, why don't you come? Why don't you come and say yes to the Lord? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> you ready to join up with us? <laughs> Amen. Somebody come. Join it. Go with Sean. Ain't nobody. Somebody else. Somebody else.
But all you need to know is I want to be saved. I'm tired of living this life that I've been living. I want something to change. I want a change in my life. And guess what? He will save you. He will deliver you. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. If you're here, pick me up and turn me around. If you're listening online on Facebook and you need Jesus, pick me up and turn me around. And you want him in your life, you can have him right now. He'll save you. Place my feet on solid ground. But you just have to be willing to surrender to him. Place my feet on solid ground. You pray the prayer. If you're listening, Lord. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I see all that you did for me. You sent your son to die on the cross for me, the suffering that he went through for me, the humiliation, all that he had to go through for me. Lord, I thank you, and I want to receive that right now. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior, and I want him to become Lord of my life. I surrender to you. Thank you for sending him. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for receiving me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now when you pray that prayer, that's what salvation is all about. God didn't make it difficult. He didn't make it hard to get in. It's easy to get into the kingdom. All you got to do is receive the son Jesus. Jesus did all of the work. All I got to do is accept his son as my Savior. And if you do that, then if you did it online, type into our chat box so that we can come and check on you and take care of you. We'll get you fixed up like you need to be fixed up so that you can have Christ in your life every day. One more time in the sanctuary. If you hear this, is your opportunity to come and give your life to Christ. Ain't nobody do me. Ain't nobody do telling you like not Jesus. to, but the devil. Ain't if you don't belong do to the Lord, like it's only the devil telling you not like to come. Jesus. And that's because he knows where he's going. And he wants you to go with him. Hey, Amen. Maybe see it. Nobody knows where he's going. Nobody nobody. candidates that we have, Brett, that's going into the pool. Will you please get, excuse me, get prepared for that? Uh, uh, we're going to baptize, and then we're going to serve communion, and then we'll be ready to go home. But before we do that, we want to have prayer for Papa Hill. Uh, Papa Hill's not doing very well. He's been, been in and out of the hospital lately, and uh, Anybody else want prayer? Come on down. We're gonna have prayer right now, but we're gonna we're praying especially for Papa Hill this morning. He requested Monica's requesting prayer. Amen. Praying for uh, Mother Biffle. Amen as well. And we're gonna pray for Deacon Red. He's going uh, starting his his treatments this week. So we, we all want y'all to keep him in prayer. Amen. Amen. Keep him in prayer. We keep, oh, Mother Flint, we keep praying for Mother Flint as well. Who? Her daughter? How old was the daughter? 
we can pray for Regina. A lot of times Regina is online. She sends her tithes to the church. Regina Jerry sends her tithes to the church from Arkansas. someone who needs prayer, whisper that name to the Lord, please. Listen, God can hear you where you are. If you got a name that you need to whisper to the Lord, whisper that name to the Lord and watch God work. You got to trust and believe that he will work. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we come humbly before you. We bring all the names that was called this morning and We're laying them at the altar before you. We know that you are God that knows each one of them and each one of them's condition. You know what they need, Heavenly Father. We're asking that you would touch each one according to what their need is. You are the God that can heal. You are the God that can comfort. But you also a God that when you know that we need to come and be with you, you you know how to bring us home with you. We commit each one of them to you because only you know what you're doing. We don't know, Heavenly Father, we just, we know that whatever it is, whatever the trial, whatever situation, that you got it under control. You designed it in our lives even before the foundation of the world. We know you know what you're doing. Just give us what we need to get through it. We know you got that power. You said your grace is sufficient. And we know it's sufficient in whatever we need. We know you even got dying grace. When it's time for us to do that, you give us the grace that we need to do that. So bless us now. Each one that's standing here at the altar. Each one that has called a name. Every name that's been called. You know what they need. Send your grace. By the power of your Holy Spirit. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory. For we know it already belongs to you. It's in Jesus' name. That blood that shed on the cross. It's in his name that we ask it all. Amen. 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 Listen to me, please. Y'all listen to me, please. We're trying to. uh, No, we're not trying. We're going to. We're going to build an educational building. When we built this, yes, we put classrooms in it, but. Through the years, we've outgrown our classroom space. We, our teaching has grown, and so we want to put on an educational building. For those that don't know, that window right there will be turned into a doorway, and the hallway or the, or the vestibule area will extend all the way down come into Sister Lee's office and then the building will go straight across and all the way out through the field. If you got, we had it on screen once, you get a picture of what we're doing. And 
And it's going to cost us a little money. And I know he wanted to do it, but Ernie can't pay for it by himself. He wanted to, but he, he can't pay for it by himself. So him and Mac need y'all's help. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's why I was trying, I, what I described to you coming down is when you look at that, that top, the high top is our present church. And then we would attach that, come down and go around. Then we go across and the blue area is the new building. And on the end of that is a gymnasium as well. So, for our, so future growth. Our future growth with our children and all where we're working on everything uh, for our future. We don't want to build for today. We want to build for our future. So I want you all to work with me and help us do that. Amen. Amen. So I, that's why I'm asking all of our tithers, uh, to, uh, all of our members, should I say, to become, if you're not already, to become a tither. Become a tither. If you tithe, it, it, it's not just going to bless the church. It's going to bless you. Go into that word. Look at Malachi 3 and see what God says. If you bring the tithes, I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive and then I rebuke the devourer for your sake I won't allow your ground to cast forth before the times in the fields says the Lord of hosts and nations around you in other words your neighbors and your friends they're going to look at you and see how blessed you are and they're going to start saying you lucky yeah. tell them I ain't lucky I'm blessed I'm a tither I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. Amen. And that's, that's what the Lord will do for you in return. And then I ask everybody to put a little bit into the building fund if you can every week. That's what's going to help us. The bank wants to help us, but we got to show that we have some ability to help them. Amen. We can't, we, they want to know that we can give them their money back, in other words. So please, I want you to uh, do that for us, if you would not, don't mind. Amen? Amen. I just ask you to, to tithe until we get built in, the building and then pay for it. We did it here. We did this in, in, 19, in, in 1999. We finished this building. And in, in 2016, we paid it off took us only 17 years to pay it off. And we can do the same again, can't we? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Then that got to relieve Ernie and Mac from all that money they got to get. <laughs> all right. Let's follow the direction of the Urshans. This is Youth Month and our children are doing a great job, so we want to honor them this month. Amen. This is our children and our youth. They were working this month, so. And all auxiliaries, I think they want to take pictures today. Preachers and deacons. Uh, Y'all dressed up today, we're going to take pictures. Amen. No, we're going to take them up here, I think. We want to take them here. And I got it. I got the, I got this thing set for the preachers. Y'all going to be looking good. I've been thinking about it. So. <laughs> All right, let's. And they're getting ready for baptism. Oh, man. 
ministry leaders, all ministry leaders, you're going to be taking pictures as well. All ministry leaders. We're setting up our website, so we want all our pictures on the website. People see all our ministry leaders. Our, our ministries, too, I think they're going to take pictures. Sunday, or should I say, how many men don't know that next Sunday is the Super Bowl? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be at Mount Zion. We'll be over at Mount Zion uh, for Super Bowl. What time, Marlon? Four, five, four o'clock. You can start. They're gonna be there at four o'clock for the Super Bowl. All the men. We have a wonderful time. We eat and fellowship. So can we all of the men come out and fellowship with us next Sunday, beginning at 4 o'clock. We'll be doing the Super Bowl party. you requested of us and you said that you would bless us even if we gave it back and so we ask your blessings upon it right now that it would satisfy the kingdom work and then let that be no void in the life of the givers in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you my helpers thank my little helpers amen <laughs> now for baptism and then we will serve communion and then after we finish uh, 
before you go, we're going to take pictures of, of the ministry leaders and all. So remember that. Uh, I think, do we do announcements now? Y'all have to help me, huh? All right, we're going to do the announcement then. Uh, Reverend Jones going to come and take this is how I go change, huh? Good morning. Good Hear me now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Scripture this morning is coming from John, the third chapter. The third chapter in the uh, 13th verse, starting at 13th verse, and it reads as follows. Then Jesus came to Je uh, from Galilee to John to be baptized. Wait, hold up. Then Jesus came from Galilee to, the jo to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so. Now, for this it is fit for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and lit, lighted upon him. And suddenly, suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God has blessed the word and made the hearers of the, of the word be blessed. Amen. This Bible here is in the word of prayer. Father God, we come now, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, to go into the water which you has commanded us to be, to baptize in the name of Jesus, Father. And we come, Father, asking you, O oh, Father God, just to bless the ones that's going in the water. And when they come up, Father, let them feel the spirit of your Holy Ghost, Father, fall upon them fresh, Father. And then, Father, give us the will, Father, to take them by the hand and lead them and guide them and teach them your way, Father, and doing your will, Father. Father, we ask you to bless now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. our sister Mate in obedience to the command of the head of the church we baptize you our sister in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit in amen. amen to our scripture coming from 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians beginning at verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord 
that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Most gracious God and kind Heavenly Father, and we come again on this morning just to thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. You told us that we should observe your death, burial, and resurrection as we eat around the Lord's table. And so we pray to God that you might take these carnal elements and turn them into a spiritual. The wine, the bread. We realize that it's not like the Catholic Church say that it is not transubstantiation. It's not blood, it's not, and it's not body, it's not flesh. But it symbolizes and represents blood and flesh. Help us to remember that you died for each and every one of us out on Calvary's tree got up on the third day morning with all power in your hands to pay for our redemption. We say thank you on this morning. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. And the church said Amen. while we're waiting on Pastor Malone to come out first of all we want to Okay, announcements. Help me out. Good morning. Today I will be reading you the morning announcements. Zion West is chartering a bus trip to the Chicago Auto Show on Tuesday, February 28th. Price per person is $35, which includes the bus ride and entry to, to Auto Show. Bus departing from the bus is, will be departing from 520 Mulberry Street at 9 a.m. and returning at 6 p.m. The contact person is Dorothy Red. You can reach her at 815-985-4082. The day and time of the annual business meeting has been changed to 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 4th, following the leadership meeting. On March 6, 2023, at 7 p.m. is the SOAR Awards. You can get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. St. Lou Missionary Baptist, Baptist Church, Black History Month theme, Sun, Sunday on the February 2nd, I mean February 12th, 2023, any form of black, red, and green. February 19th, 2023, Black History T-shirt. February 26, 2023, African attire. 
The children's choir rehearsal will be held at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 7th. Please direct any questions to Sister Hazel Williams. Um, there's a sneaker ball going on, and I don't know who has tickets, but it is Saturday the 25th. Okay, uh, Sister Ann Duncan, this is for the nurses. They will be having a sneaker ball, and how much are the tickets? Tickets are $50. Tickets are $50. So see Sister Ann Duncan. Uh, Reverend Mike Williams would like to make an announcement. Thank you. Good morning, St. Luke. I will be standing in for Reverend uh, Michael Williams to do the announcements on this morning. A um, few things. On the first Saturday in March at 11 o'clock, there will be a leaders meeting. Um, pastors ask for leaders to start meeting every other month. So we will have a leaders meeting at 11 o'clock on the first Saturday of March. Also, for those that were in Sunday school this morning, um, he spoke about doing a mental health awareness month. That will be in March. We have five different, um, you have five different opportunities to um, learn, gain information about mental health. We will start, it will be doing Sunday school hour from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. The classes will be downstairs. That is the first, first starting the first Sunday in March, my apologies. And then also on the third Saturday in March, this Malone, is that correct? That is correct. Third Saturday, March, Sister Malone, the Spiritual Guidance will also be having a mental health awareness forum. So please um, look out for those announcements. You will see flyers on next Sunday. More on the uh, monitors, so definitely be, uh, be attentive. So we, we ask that you keep us in prayer. You keep the speakers in prayer um, for next month for Mental Health Awareness Month. God bless you. I just want to say something. We just saw a sneak preview of our future church. Can we give them a hand. A sneak preview of our future church. Those children is going to be us later on. And then something else I want to say. We need to take mental health serious. We need to take it serious. We don't know where and when and who's going to be next. And I pray every day, Lord, I, I, I don't want to be out of my right mind. And we see people, and I, I, I go around to different houses and hospitals, nursing homes, and things of this sort, and we see people don't know they're in the world. That's right. That is one serious illness. And we need to take heed to that serious, serious illness of mental health. And we tease about it and we play about it. And some of the things they say is, is, is so funny, just ridiculous. But it's serious. It is a serious illness. And I want you to really, really, really take heed to it mental illness. Now, I'm, I'm looking out of my peripheral vision and I think I see pastor coming in. <laughs> so, see, I don't have to look around. I knew he was coming. <laughs> well, I guess is everything done? Yes. Except communion? Yes. Well, let's prepare ourselves for, for communion. We read already. Everything but sir. Yeah, yeah. We need some. We need some over here. Anyone else? 
here. We got three over here. brothers and sisters this was done before the event of what we just preached about this was the event that Jesus predicted and told not predicted but declared he didn't have to predict anything he was God but he declared to his disciples that he was going to have those wounds in that body his body was going to be broken in all of those places he, he declared that to them and he declared to them that blood was going to come from those wounds that I'm going to have on my body all of the breaks all of those breaks that we talked about blood came from them and the blood was for the remission of our sins so when we Think about this little wafer that we call a wafer, but it represents that broken body, the back that was just raw, a mass of a mess that had been beaten. That was breaks where they nailed nails in his hands and in his feet and put that crown of thorns on his head. Those were breaks in his body. That blood came streaming from. When you think about this, think about what he did for you. How he sacrificed all of that for you. We ask our new uh, convert stand up as we. This is what we are. Brethren, stand with with her. Preachers, stand with her. As this is your first communion, and we we say to you, this is what God did for you. This is how you got that salvation, that broken body, and that shed blood. And let us remember that. Let us partake of it. everyone partaken. Let us then, and they sang the hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives, but we're going to dismiss. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now and forever. And the saints of God said, Amen. Preachers, 